Now, Uthal Gaon uh, told me earlier that I should talk about the books that I enjoyed reading, and this is what people would like to hear. Well, and uh, Uthal Gaon specifically mentioned detective stories. Now, I must say that detective stories are very useful. Now that I'm the chair of the Law and Order Committee, <laughs> rule, of, rule, rule of Law Committee, I find it very useful having read so many detective stories and having read um, descriptions of many court scenes. I find that I know quite a lot more about the law than I would have just reading through law books. So also, detective stories uh, I find very helpful in, in working out what some person might be up to. <laughs> Uh, you, when you read a detective story, or when you read as many as I have done, you, you uh, quite often you know very early on who the villain is. Well, that means that that book is not very good. Now, the good one, the good books are the ones where you just can't tell who the villain is going to be until the very end. But I find increasingly that the more detective stories you read, the more likely you are to be able to work out who the who the villain is going to be, what the, what the end of the story is going to be. And that, that does help you in uh, working out what people's motives are. And that is very important in politics. It's very useful to be able to uh, have a good idea of, of people's motives. The detective stories always teach you that you must ask the question, who is going to profit from a particular crime? <laughs> Now, I think this is a very good uh, a, a lesson for politicians. What, who is going to profit from this situation? And that question will give you a clear idea of, of what people are up to. So detective stories are very useful. But the books that I have loved throughout, really loved, are not detective stories, although I've enjoyed them. Uh, my favorite authors, one, well, two of my favorite authors are George Eliot and Victor Hugo. Both of them, I think, because I like them, because they explore the human mind. They explore human emotions. And they also have a social and political conscience, which I, I consider very valuable. I've always said that my... My favorite character is uh, Jean Valjean from Les Miserables because to me he was the ultimate revolutionary. He was a man who revolutionized his whole way of looking at the world. I've always said that what we really need is a spiritual revolution and this was what he managed to achieve very successfully. Now the reason why I like George Eliot is also because she is very supportive of individuality and with peoples whose ideas and whose views did not quite fit into their times, but who had the courage and uh, the strength to continue to hold on to the views that they thought were, were worth supporting. And I've always liked her characters because, of course, uh, her strongest characters were women, and that's the way it should be in any good book. And they were all, they always managed to survive in spite of adversity, uh, adverse, uh, all sorts of adversities, and not survive in the material sense. A lot of her characters did not end up any wealthier or uh, materially better off than they were at the beginning. But they always manage to maintain their spiritual strength throughout until the very end, pursuing the goals in which they believed. So these are the books that always inspired me. People have asked me who inspired me in politics, and I have to confess that I never thought of uh, writers and uh, authors, uh, writers and book characters until I was uh, preparing what I might say today, then it occurred to me that I have been tremendously inspired and influenced by fictional characters and by writers, not just by uh, historical figures or political leaders. So 
literature for me is not something you read just, uh, just for fun or just to, to pass the time. It's something that I take seriously in the sense that whatever I read, I think over, I mull over certain, um, certain expressions, I, I wonder whether what the writer says is something that I could agree with, and if I could not, why not? And why certain characters see, are so much more attractive to me than others? So, literature is a learning process. I don't think you can ever stop learning from books. Each book that you read is different. And even if it's a terrible book, it's, it teaches you something because you, you understand what makes a book terrible and you can avoid, avoid all the mistakes and all the um, weaknesses that the author has, in your opinion, indulged in. I don't think there ever will come a time when I get tired of reading books. At the moment, I have not much time to read books, not as much time as I would like. And uh, if I say to you that I haven't even gone through two chapters of Hilary Mantle's Bring Up the Dead Bodies, you can see how little time I have. This is the sort of book that one should not be able to put down. But I had to put, to put it down because I had to wade through not terribly exciting documents, which I was obliged to wade through. So all of you who have the time and the leisure to read, please take advantage of it. Please read while you can. You never know when it would come in useful what you've read. Because even if you are placed in a, in a situation where you, have, you, where you no longer have access to books, you can always think of the ones you've read in the past. And talking about what you've read in the past, I must speak up for poetry. I don't know whether this is a sign of, uh, sign of old age, but I find that I enjoy poetry more and more, that I get more out of poetry uh, than out of prose, the older I get, that each line of verse gives me more to think about sometimes than a whole book. And if you have learned, uh, committed some poems to memory, you will find they come in very useful should you ever be imprisoned, which I hope you will not be. But you will find it very useful. And I would encourage all of you to try to commit as many poems to memory as possible. Uh, partly to make sure that you keep your memory in good shape. It's only by memorizing that your memory remains sharp. And partly because you will find that uh, these little lines here and there come in very useful at all moments in your life. I think this is about enough from me now, and it all comes to uh, Actually, I would like to ask you another question, but uh, I want to explain first that uh, I was a, a librarian in the University of Yangon for nearly 40 years. And then uh, during my time, you know, I saw that the library was uh, getting very uh, old, and we didn't get any new books. There was no funding and it was neglected. So I know that Dosu is now helping our uh, University of Yangon. Uh, at the same time, we also need to upgrade the public libraries because that will encourage uh, more readers to uh, take, take uh, you know, uh, read not only Myanmar books, but uh, books in English and other languages also. So I wanted to ask uh, Dosu, you know, what, um, in, in what ways you could uh, help us upgrade the libraries? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can help straight off by asking everybody in the, in the audience to make as big a donation as possible <laughs> uh, to us upgrading.